Don't use your emotional brain because that fucks you up. Do the exact opposite of what everybody else is doing. How to create 96 pieces of content in an hour. It's almost like top trumps. What would every other coach do in this situation? Well, they do that. Do the opposite of that. In this video, we are going to talk about how you can create content on autopilot. Hey guys, we're Dan and Mike from Business and Banter, uh, formerly Bicycles and Banter, because the channel is still called Bicycles and Banter, I have to remember that. Yeah. Uh, we haven't changed it, because someone else yeah. has nicked it and he's got like one subscriber, really annoying. But uh, yeah, and we're here today to help you with your online fitness business in any way that we can. And today we're going to talk about how you can create content on autopilot with ease, with no effort, and still get floods and floods of leads coming through the door, because it is that easy and straightforward. It sounds amazing. Yeah, I wonder, wonder why someone's selling that idea. I've seen this a fair bit recently. I don't know if it's like... I don't know if it's a real thing. No, it is a real thing. People are trying to sell it. Um, it's not a real thing as in you can't do it. Is this whole concept of like spending a minimum amount of time on content and, and going to get amazing results from it. It's this concept about like, you don't have to try that hard. Um, you only need to do content for five minutes a day. You shouldn't need to do it longer than that. Uh, and yet you should expect your business to kind of somehow explode overnight because of that. And it just got me thinking about the world and like, content creators you follow and all this sort of stuff. And it makes, it kind of annoys me because it just defies logic, this whole concept. And I think when coach, if coaches were to look at this messaging in the cold light of day and actually take a step back and think about it and go, okay, if I look at my favorite content creators and the people that I really like watching the most, Ooh, well. I don't know, say Casey Neistat, if you like watching Casey, he's a good YouTuber. You look at the Four Brothers, the golfers you watch a lot of, um, Tubes and Ange, you like them on golf, don't you? Because like they're, they're not very good at golf, that's why you like watching you them. like me, um, better than me. You know, I can look at, again, like, I don't particularly like love Rick Shields, but I do watch some of his stuff. Rick Shields is a good example of that, right? And you kind of go, okay. Sam Seaforth. Sam Seaforth, great example. Um, there's loads of people on Instagram, like El Burrito Monster does like loads of cooking stuff, really, really cool videos and, and recipes and stuff like that. And I kind of sit there and say to, I want to say to coaches, if these guys put in five minutes of day to their content, you would not fucking watch them in any way, shape or form. But yet these are people that are put up on a pedestal as like great content creators and people that you should look up to in terms of content. And it's always the people that have got you something to sell. Funny that. Um, around content creation or creating content on autopilot or you only need five minutes a day on content. They've always got something to sell you that relates to that. And I have to remind coaches to step back. If Rick Shields put in five minutes a day to his content, do you think he'd have over three million YouTube subscribers? No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. Do you think that if Sam C4 put in five minutes effort a day into his, into his videos, he'd have the audience he's got? No, he wouldn't. He, he just wouldn't have that. And it, it really winds me up when I see coaches being sold this dream of like content, content machine whereby you don't have to do anything. You just upload one YouTube video and it does it all for you. Right. Do you think that is really going to create amazing content? Really? Ask yourself that question. Or are you doing it because it's easier? And most of the time with content creation, if it's sold to you as easier, just know that it means worse. Like in terms of message, in terms of production value, in terms of all those things, easier is not the best thing to do long term for your business. And I think that too many coaches find content creation difficult. So they're looking for it to be made easier and people are catching on to that and they're selling you a dream by saying that they can make it easier for you. When in actual fact, it's not going to lead you to having a better business in the long run. Yeah, it's funny how people always choose the easier option. Yeah. It's funny that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, though, always. Yeah. When you think about it, you kind of go, well... Do the opposite of that, always. Li literally. Do, even common sense would go, well, mm -hmm. do you think that the easy option or the harder option is probably going to lead to better results? Probably the harder one, right? Because it, it, by definition, it, it's harder. It's, so, it's sort of what they tell their clients, isn't it? Yeah, so it's, with the training. It's going, to, it's going to be better, no? Yeah. So it's funny how it's always, oh, I'll do the easy. I'll do the easy route. Where, when, where did the easy route ever get anybody? Again, coaches want to try to inspire and motivate and they, they love David Goggins. They, they love all of that. They love all of that. Yeah, I love David Goggins. Let him Goggins. do that for yeah. him. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know if have you seen the Sprint documentary on Netflix? Yeah, Sprinters. it's really good. Great example of that. Great example of it. Like, none of them are going, oh yeah, I just going to do this because it's easier. <laughs> Not a single one of them. They're for four years to run 10 seconds. It's, it's mad, like, the 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 level. And again, you look at all those behind the scenes documentaries, the, the full swing, the Man City, you look at all these things. Simone Biles. Simone Biles, yeah. yeah. Not a single one of them is going, oh yeah, I just did this because it's easier. Not one of them's going, oh, I had a massive line until 10 o'clock in the morning, just thought I'd fuck training off today because it's easier. 
Just think logically. Yeah. Just think logically for a second. Don't use your emotional brain because that fucks you up. Use your logical brain. I was training every day, but then somebody said that I could do it all in one day. So I thought I'll do that one instead because I get six days off. I just played COD for the rest of the time, six days a week. Not a single athlete at the Olympic Games has done that, have they? Not a single one of them. And yet what people want is they want an Olympic Games style business, but with that fucking work ethic, it just doesn't exist. It just doesn't happen. And my frustration is that you're being led down the garden path around this whole, like, make it easier for yourself, do these sorts of things. Now, here's a good example. And I'm going to kind of, it's a little bit hypocritical because we're started doing this, right? But one of the things I've seen for, for people on, on social media that they get told is how to create 96 pieces of content in an hour. And they get sold this dream of, like, film a YouTube video like this for an hour, um, take the clips out of it, to post as Instagram reels, post those same things on YouTube shorts, post those same things on TikTok, make threads out of those things that you said in those reels, repurpose it then for posts on LinkedIn, for X, for, what well, I can't say X, it's Twitter, what's the next for? Facebook, whatever, right? And they just say to put it all across thing. And my argument to that is always, no, because your content is shit. You're just putting it across more platforms for more people to see that it is shit. Not enough coaches are clear enough on their message that they know enough about their target audience, that they know enough about their problems, that they ha they, they can they can accurately describe the solution that they have and properly sell it to people well enough in a one hour YouTube video and also keep people entertained with enough personality and enough that's going to keep someone engaged for that long to make those style videos. It's really poor advice for the majority of people. We get away with it because we're funny. But we do know our target market. We do know our audience. And we come into these, by the way, with no notes. There's, no, there's nothing prepared here. This is just all in our brains because we most know most of it is. We know our niche. We know our audience. We know what your pain points are. And we're talking about things that we're seeing on a daily basis. And you guys will watch videos like this a little bit more often and a little bit more depth for a longer time period than people are going to watch you do a YouTube video talking about nutrition and training. No, no one gives a fuck. Whereas you guys give a little bit more of a fuck about this. So we kind of do it this way. But my point is that we don't just rely on this content. We've got all the other stuff going on as well. Um, my point being is that a lot of coaches, again, are looking for the easy route. Of course, it's easier to film one YouTube video for an hour and create 96 pieces of content off the back of it. Who wouldn't want to hear that? I can tell you now, it doesn't happen. It does not happen like that. It's not good enough. It's, is it mad that people fall for it? I don't think it is. I think no, it's, it's human people. nature. It's, it's human nature. Humans are lazy. All right. Again, just be... Just be sceptical. Just be quick. Like, just but my whole argument is that's what everyone else is doing. So, okay, if, if you're looking at it, and, and I've said this to coaches all the time, right, what would everyone, what would every other coach do in this situation? Well, they do that. Do the opposite of that. What would every other coach do in this situation? Well, they create 20 tips on how to get more protein into your diet. Do the opposite of that. Don't talk about protein and tips in your diet. Talk about the opposite. Talk about something about you and your life. Something that's going on that's away from fitness. That'll be better for you. This is a constant thing, I think, with coaches. Just do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. And you will not go far wrong, trust me, because everyone else is acting on an emotion and they're following all these little hacks and these easy things, the, the shortcuts, creating 96 bits of content off one YouTube video. That's what they're trying to do. And you look around and go, well, the reason they're trying to do that is because they've got no clients. So they're trying the next hack and the next hack and it doesn't get them anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I think coaches do tend to jump on trends like that like whatever it is whether it is this whether it's something else whether it's well you see it all the time like and trends will come and go so like there was a trend obviously when whole mosey did that style of video with all the things popping in and then everybody starts to do it and because the principle of why it worked is it used to capture attention it then stops capturing attention when everybody does it so then everybody started to do like the waving five pounds of fat and you know the microphone on the end of the wooden spoon and you know daft stuff around the, the house and again it's started to work because it captures attention it's different it's novel mm. and the, the the principle is it's different and it's novel it's the opposite of what was currently happening and then everybody copies it so then it's now not different and novel so then it, it wears off right and then the next trend comes, and the next trend comes, and the next trend comes, and the next trend comes. And you just end up being a late adopter to a trend that by the time that you've done it, it doesn't work anymore. So instead of looking at what other people are doing, make the things that you want to make. Like, say the things that you, you want to say. Don't look at this for in this example that we're using. Oh, this looks like a really great service of that sounds good. I get fucking three months worth of content out of one hour. Wicked. Like, that sounds good. Like, some other coaches are doing it. Okay, cool. Well, like Dan's just said there, the reason why people would do this is because 
they're hoping for clients, which shows that their business isn't in the position mm -hmm. that they want it to be in. So do you think that you should follow the advice or copy people that have a business that isn't in the position that, that they want it to be in? Do you think that that's a good person to kind of copy? Or, like Dan said, do the exact opposite of what everybody else is doing. And it's often the, the, an indicator that you're doing the right things. It's, it, and, and I think that's the thing with it. It's, it's, it's the emotional thing of you see something that someone's saying who you might trust and look up to, and they might be doing that way. Of, they might be doing their content that way, and they may be doing that. And it's and it's often people that have built up an audience over years and years and years and years, and they're now coming out with this thing of like, oh, now all you need to do is this. I'm like, no, that's working for you because of you built the audience and you've got people that know, like, and trust you and all this sort of stuff. You've got some social proof. But for most coaches, they haven't. When they're looking at that, they haven't. Because if you do have social proof and you have been going for years and you do get good results, people, you won't rely on that shit. I keep coming back to it all the time. It's not that that they're doing that's making a difference. It's all the years of social yeah. proof and the years they've been doing the hard work. That's the reason that people are buying into what they're saying now and they're buying into the trend or the hack and all this sort of stuff. And it just, it's just, it just frustrates me that people... People are preying on that vulnerability of coaches that they want things easier, that they are inherently lazy, you know, because again, humans are, and they want the easier, the easier hack that takes less time. Everyone wants that. And they're just preying on that. And when I look back at people who are doing that, I look back and go, you've been doing this for five years, six years, and you've done all the hard work and you're now saying it's easy. And I'm like, yeah, it's easy for you because of all that you've done. And, and coaches are missing that bit. Again, it's the same thing for coaches. Think of it like that. Like most coaches get, on the high horse around um, the Jack the Vegan uh, bodybuilder because he ate meat for 15 years before that and he took gear. Mm. It's like, so is it the being vegan? No, it's not. It's that for 15 years he ate enough protein and they trained hard like, and yeah. he took gear. Like, yeah, you're, you're correct. And it's the same thing here. It's, it's exactly the same thing. So the equivalent being is that they're now vegan, a.k.a. they're now saying that you can do this content hack. But for the last 15 years... They worked hard, they ate enough protein, and, yeah. and they, they, they took gear, right? It's, it's, it's exactly the, the same thing. Now, if you look at what we've done, and if you're here, hopefully you would like to, to think that you would kind of maybe respect what we've done. We've never jumped on a trend. Never tried to hack our way out of content creation. Yeah, we're sat filming a podcast, but Dan said there's a reason behind that, because coaches are more likely to consume it, and we're too busy coaching clients. And it's also, by the way, that because that's the equivalent of us doing all of that work that we've just done for the last nine or ten years, right? With really good, unique, organic content, genuine stuff, spoof videos, um, different mm. slide on on things, not really copying trends, or, you know. And then now, because we are short on time because we're coaching clients, we're now doing this and clipping out podcasts and going. We we only film a podcast for for two hours every six weeks, and we get all our content done. You can do the same as us. No, we're actually saying don't, don't yeah, do this. Yeah, we're, I'm actually telling all my clients, don't do it like this. Don't do it. Because they ask that question, so some of them go, oh, should I do that? No, you shouldn't. Yeah. That's the last thing you should do. But what we could do is we could sell you on that, like, because we've got a business that, have, that has done, you know, relatively well. Um, and we could go steal our content hack of how we were able to produce 60 pieces of content in, in just two hours. And then we could give you that, that framework. But it, it's disingenuous because that's not what got us to this position. What gets you to the position is the, all the other stuff. What maintains that position is different, right? And it, again, it's arguably the same with bodybuilding or developing your physique, right? Mm -hmm. you, you do different things to get you to a position. Maintenance is far easier than it is to, to grow, right? So you do different things. It's exactly the same thing. So again, don't get fooled into that. When you're creating your own content, really try to put the blinkers on. And if you are, I said this on one of the, the webinars in the members group, join the members group. Too far into it. Yeah. I know, no one's there now. Join the members group. It's below, for fuck's sake. Just no, join it. I said this on one of the webinars. Um, and I forgot the point. I will get it back, so don't cut in. What was the point? Too many energy drinks. Not enough. Not enough I'm energy not, drinks. Not, I don't want to problem. Five weeks. Five you're weeks. About, you're talking about us and being disingenuous and about how this is what we do now and all that jazz. It's gone. No more British beef. Ah, ah, that's, that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. That's the problem. No more right. British beef. Right, go on. But like, but like Mike said, like a lot of these people have got something to sell you here and now. They've got something that they want to sell you now. They've got a course on this sort of thing, right? And like Mike said, what we've done to get us where we are is by being more unique, by being um, genuine and authentic to got ourselves. It. It's grown to, to where we are. Mike's got it back keep now. It so, keep, yeah, it keep it there. Keep, keep it there. Keep it there. Um, 
and, and that's what I want you to remember is that it's not it's not not necessarily saying that what these people are saying is wrong. I'm just saying that for them and where they are right now, it makes sense for them to do that. Like Mike said about maintaining, you see a lot of coaches do this all the time. Is like, do I think you can maintain a physique training twice a week? Yeah, but you ain't ever going to grow one. You ain't ever going to get to that point. It's probably where I went wrong. Just went going twice a week. It's the same thing. You it's like twice a week. Yeah. I used to. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's why I tried to grow going twice a week. Right. Didn't work. Yeah. And, and it's remembering that. And, and like Mike said, I always want you to come back to it and go, we don't benefit from telling you this. We don't benefit from telling you, don't don't fall for that. We've got nothing to sell you off the back of it other than we're telling you to work hard. Like, no, we didn't benefit from that. You benefit. But it's what's got us to where we are. And we're being genuine by telling you, look, by doing this, we know that our niche now are going to watch these types of videos. And we know that our audience will spend time doing this. And we know for us, it's the best way for us to do this content right now. But if we were starting out from fresh, from from scratch again, we would not be here doing this. So the point I made on the webinar was, oh, it's gone again. No, it hasn't. <laughs> but, um, the point I made was, is that what a lot of coaches do is they, they pick out somebody in their niche and they look at their videos and they look at their content and yeah. go, oh, that looks good. I'm going to do that. Yeah. What they're doing now. Yeah. 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 And, 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 they co- and they copy it. What I would do is find, look at people in your niche, whatever, like look at, look at, look at those people that are doing the same thing and pick out the bits that you don't like in their content. That's more useful to you. Pick out the, the phrases or the points that they make that you don't agree with. Pick out the style of content that you don't like and do the opposite of those things. Because if you're in the same niche, so let's just take that niche as you work with, let's just say bodybuilders because it's easy. And you go to a, a bodybuilding page. So you're both attracting bodybuilding style clients, right? You go to another bodybuilder, successful bodybuilder, you look at their content and go, okay, well, he's doing this style of content. I'm going to make that style of content as well because that works. Yeah, that, work, that works for him because for the last 10 years, he's been at the forefront of the industry. He's got all of these client results. He's turning people pro. They're standing on stage. He's got loads of clients that are shouting about it. Yeah, that works for him. So you doing the same thing, then you're marketing against him then. You're you're then in the same category. And who are they going to pick? Well, him every time, right? Because he's already established. So instead, you look at the things and go, how would I make this different? How would I make this more relatable to me and the type of client that would want to work with me? So do you, you look for the points that you can, to some degree, beat them on. That that's It's almost like top trumps. You'll, you will never win. You'll never win. It'll be fun, though. Like, and you go, okay, well, what areas am I going to be better at than them? So for us, we know that... In our audience, we know what con- content our competitors make, and we know what our strong points are. So what do we lean into? It wouldn't look right to make some of the content that some of the others do. It wouldn't come across well. And if we did do that, we're then competing against those people. So you're then going to get market share, or you're going to be a worse version of, of them, right? Instead, we look at all the things that we go, that looks stupid, putting mm-hmm. a trademark next to your name. That look- we could have gone... Oh, that trademark thing sounds quite good. Like you call it a, a name, the Rapid Growth Sales Accelerator trademark. It actually sounds like something. So people are people might might buy that, might buy into that. Sounds quite good. Or you go, well, that's made up because you haven't trademarked it and you can't trademark it, and it's actually nothing anyway because we know it's nothing because we get we take all your clients. So we'll say that part. We'll do that part instead because then it's going against the grain of what everybody else does because it's true. That's the way that you do things. You go and look at people that are in your space and do the opposite of what they're doing, not the same. Don't go, oh, they did a video in their kitchen and making that, and that 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 worked really well for them, so I'm going to do it. No, it worked really well for them. Do your own fucking version of that. There you go. That's that. I think we've had that point home enough, to be fair, with good content. It's what we talk about all the time, right, in terms of content. It needs to be unique, it needs to be different. And there's so many coaches that just want to do the same as everyone else and everyone's looking at the same hacks, the same people saying the same shit and it's just like, that's not what got them there. Just think about it. Like, look at that person, think about how long you followed them for and remember that you followed their message for a long, long time before they started saying this shit. Just remember that. Can you beatbox? Probably not anymore. Probably not anymore. Um, used to be able to. No, I'm not even going to show you. I saw that. No, yeah, I can't do it. Um, saw that in it. The old... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to get into it. Says. Yeah. Can you I break dance? Can you break down? You break, you break down, so I'll be I'll beatbox. Yeah. Easy. That's another YouTube video for another time. Alright, catch you in a bit. Bye.